It's been a while since we've slotted a cent in this Dansko Lincoln Penny album from Coinroll Hunting. Let's see if today is the lucky day we finally find another penny for the collection book. Hey everyone, it's Rob Fines Treasure. Welcome back to my channel. We have a two box penny hunt in our quest to slot another cent in my Dansko Lincoln Penny album. And you guys know the drill. We're gonna hunt the 100 rolls in front of me and see if we can find some goodies. Now that being said, we have found 209 pennies of the 234 this book holds through the first 288 boxes. Obviously, this is going to be another episode, 153, and it's boxes 289 and 290, and I do have two circulated boxes in front of me, so we know we have 100 rolls to hunt through in our quest. Obviously, I'll give you guys a look at these books at the end once I compare the finds to them to see if we have any additions or upgrades, but hopefully, we just have at least a good hunt, find a good amount of wheat sense, and maybe if we're lucky, like I said, get something for the collection. Now, I've already popped the top of this first box to validate that it is circulated sense. It is, and I only checked the top row enders on both sides. Definitely looks like we have some copper in this box, so that's always a good sign, or at least a good sign that there's some older sense in the box. I'm going to go ahead and kick off this hunt with the first roll, and as soon as I have a find in box number one, I'll bring you guys back in. Our first find is going to come in roll number three of the first box. It's just going to be a common 1946 Denver but it gets us started, and that's always a good thing. Roll number five, our second wheat scent, is from 1951, minted in Philadelphia. Roll number nine, wheat scent number three, a 1952 Philadelphia. Just grabbed roll number 18 out of the box, and when I flipped it around, we've got a wheat scent ender. Let's see what year it is. That wheat scent ender for number four of the hunt is a 52 Denver. Roll number 24, fifth wheat scent is a 1945 Philadelphia. Roll number 25 is gonna give us two more wheat scents for six and seven. We have one in the front, so I flattened out the roll and I see another one peeking out. Wheat scent number six does look like it could be old because it's corroded, I guess. Hopefully we get a date. And that's going to be a 46 San Francisco. Yeah. And I don't see the S over D over mint mark, but we'll still take that 1946 S. And wheat scent number seven in the back. And that's a 45 Denver. We'll take them. Seven wheat scents now, halfway through the box. The very next roll, roll number 26, is going to give us two more wheat scents for numbers eight and nine. Right here in front. Wheat scent number eight is a 47 Denver in decent shape. We'll take that. And wheat scent number nine, peeking out back here, is going to be one from the 30s. It's not one we need, but it's good seeing one from the 30s, and that's in pretty nice shape. 1939 Philadelphia, oldest find of the box, and now nine through 26 rolls. Roll number 27, 10 Wheaties. And that's a 46 Philly. Roll number 37, wheat scent number 11, a 54 Denver. Roll number 38 is going to give us 12 wheat scents so far with 12 rolls to go. And that's a 41, is that an S I think? It is, 1941S, I almost said Denver, but we'll take the 41S for sure. Roll 39 and we've got a baker's dozen. Wheat scent number 13 was facing me. It's a damaged 1945 Philadelphia. Roll number 43 is going to give us wheat scent number 14. And that's an oldie with a mint mark. 1936 Denver, a slightly better date with a lower mintage. Not one we need and not in condition to upgrade, but still another nice find. Two 30s wheat scents in the box. Roll number 46. Wheat scent number 15 of the hunt. And that's another 1952 Denver. Well, we finished that first penny box, and as far as fines goes, it was a great box. 15 wheat scents on the board. These tall boxes have done good lately. These not so much, but it's what we got for the second box. Two from the 30s, a 36D and a 39P. Two 1959s, no bright and shinies, no 69Ss, no Canadians but two pounds, three ounces of copper, and I'll take that as a good start. One box down, 
One box to go. I did see that it was circulated coins from the holes in the bottom. Didn't see anything fancy from the holes in the bottom. Let's see if we have anything on top to report back. If I can open it, holy cow. All right. Yeah, I don't see any wheat scent enders and it does look like it has less copper than the last box and the last box didn't have a lot. Either way, it's what's on the inside of the rolls that matters and I'll be back when I have my 16th wheat scent or another find in box number two. Roll number five of box two is gonna give us our 16th wheat scent of the hunt and take a look at the date, 1939 with the San Francisco mint mark. Let me just confirm. Definitely a 39S, and the 39S is another lower mintage penny, and we'll definitely take it. Our third from the 30s, too, with mint marks. Roll number eight is going to give us another old wheat scent with a mint mark for number 17, and take a look at this one as well. 1937 San Francisco, that's even lower than the last couple. It's got some scratches on it, but there was a time when I couldn't find San Francisco minted mid to late 30s wheat scents, and we've got two in the same box. Four now, pre-40s, three with mint marks. Hopefully that's a good sign of what's coming up in this box. Roll number 60 of the hunt will give us wheat scent number 18 of the hunt, and they're getting older. Look at this one, 1920, decent condition, probably was cleaned a while ago, but a full date and nice rim. 1920 Philadelphia, common one, but a 103 year old scent in the box, five now, pre-40s. Roll number 70, wheat scent number 19 is gonna be a 1944 Philadelphia. Same roll, we have our first variety found. It's a 2000 Philadelphia wide AM. You can tell it's the wide AM because the A and the M are not only separated by more than they should because typically they're touching, but the FG is almost touching the building. I don't find a lot of 2000s, although the 1998 and 2000 wide AMs are the most common. I usually find the 98s. You know, it's only about a $20 coin in mint state condition. And even though this one is probably in a AU condition at best, not one I would grade, still nice to see because I haven't found one of these in a while. 2000 wide AM, we'll take it. For those wondering why it's the wide AM, they accidentally used the proof reverse dies from the 98s on, on the reverse of these instead of the regular business strike reverse die. All right, first variety. Oh, and while I have you here, I was checking for the 95 uh, Denver DDO and noticed we had a nice little uh, die chip, a couple of them on this coin. So I figured I'd hold on to it as a miscellaneous find. Plus, it's in pretty nice shape to boot. Now that we covered that, let's get back to the hunt. Just splashed out roll number 72 of the hunt and I think I see two wheat cents for numbers 20 and 21. Wheat scent number 20 peeking out right here towards the back of the roll is gonna be a 56 Denver. And wheat scent 21 looks like it's damaged and could be another oldie. Wheat scent 21, it's not that old. 1945 Philadelphia, we'll take it. 21 Wheaties now through 72 rolls. Roll number 74. Wheat scent number 22 is a pretty nice 1958 Philadelphia. There is a very rare DDO on it, but uh, it's pretty naked eye visible and I don't see it. Either way, still a nice looking coin. Last year, wheat scent, first from that year we have found. Well, roll number 84 of the hunt is gonna give us not only a wheat scent, but a mint air. Take a look at this. 1952 San Francisco, with a clipped planchet, and technically, you always wanna look 180 degrees across to see if there's the Blakesley effect on the coin, and you can see that right there. It's a little soft edge, and that is exactly 180 degrees away from the clip, and I think we could probably see it naked eye visible. If I flip it around, yeah, you can see a small protrusion at the bottom right here exactly 180 degrees across from it. So that's not only a 52 San Francisco, it's a clipped planchet with what's known as the Blakesley effect. That makes it definitely genuine. Very cool find, small clip, not really worth a whole bunch more, but still a fun find nonetheless. And our first 52S of the hunt, I'll put it up top since it also has a mint air.
Now let's get back to the hunt. Roll number 94 is gonna give me a first as far as the number of finds that are clipped planchets. Take a look at this, 1970 Denver. And yet again, we have the clip here, small clip, and a little bit of softness on the strike on the opposite corner. Can't get mad at that. That is another clip planchet. I don't find these too often. That's only a 1970 Denver in terrible shape, but still pretty cool finding two in the same box. We're stuck on 23 wheat cents for a little bit now. Hopefully we can get a couple more. Well, we finished that second penny box and definitely cooled down in the back half of the box. Only one wheat cent found after roll 25. So it gave us eight, a total of 23 for the whole hunt. Wish we would have got two more for 25, would have had both boxes with double digits, but I'm not going to complain. 23 wheat cents in my area is definitely a good hunt, especially when you factor in that we got one from 1920, a 36 Denver, a 37S, a 39, and a 39S. Definitely five good finds there. And on top of that, we found a 2000 wide AM variety and two clipped planchets. One just so happens to be a wheat scent in pretty good shape, a 52S. Definitely a fun hunt and uh, a pretty good quality and quantity in those two boxes. We got two Canadian cents, a 76 and a 78, both from box two. Total of 659s, one pretty nice copper scent. I'm just going to hold on to it because it's a really nice 73 Denver. It's a common year, but still a nice scent. And then we ended up with three 69Ss, all from the second box as well, no DDOs. Speaking of the second box, we got over five pounds of copper, a total of five pounds and three ounces. That means box two had over three pounds of copper in it, and we'll definitely take that. I don't think we're gonna have any upgrades or additions, but let me go ahead and compare all of today's finds to the albums to see if we do, and I'll be back with a final look at the books and some final thoughts on this really fun two box hunt. Well, I have compared all of today's finds to the albums, and of course, we don't have any upgrades or additions yet again. With only two Canadian small cents found, nothing can be added. 68 of 115, now 104 boxes. And none of the 25 wheat cents we needed, although I could argue that I could take one of these blank planchets out and stick that 52S clip planchet in here. We're going to keep that for my personal collection. Now, after 290 boxes searched, we're still stuck at 25 missing wheat cents. And you know what? I'll take the hunt that we had. I know we didn't add anything or upgrade anything, but that was a fun hunt. We got mint airs, varieties, a lot of wheats, good copper, and had a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys had fun watching as well. If you did, I definitely would appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.